Good afternoon from the kitchen folks. It's another experimental day in home brewing. Learning as I'm doing, today I'm going to have a go at making a Rausch beer. So in my Rausch beer I'm going to be using Weyermann's Rausch malt, which I've got from the malt miller. Excellent service, definitely recommend them. And also I'm going to be using Weyermann Vienna malt. So I need to use half of this and half of this. I want a kilo of malt all together in my pot. So 500 grams of this and 500 grams of this. Now I want to make my Rausch beer quite toffee flavoured. So I'm going to add to that um, an entire squeezy 750 grams of golden syrup, as well as the usual spring water, because Leeds tap water is a bit chlorine so I stick to spring water. And I'm probably going to stick a bit of sugar in as well, because I'm going for the high ABVs. I don't really do session beers, I'd rather drink less of a higher strength than more of a lower strength. Just a personal preference. The first thing I'm going to do is to weigh out my malt. So I want 500 grams of Rausch malt. And there we go, just over. So I shall pop that into my pot. Next I'm going to weigh out 500 grams of my Vienna malt. There we go again, just over, but that's fine. And as with the Rausch malt, the Vienna malt goes into the pot also. Then I'm going to top the whole thing up with spring water. I've got five litres in this bottle and I'm going to stick the lot in. It smells lovely. It smells like Ovaltine. I'm going to give all of this a nice stir around just to move it from the bottom of the pan, just to get it all mixing together. We want those two malts, the Vienna malt and the Rausch malt to be friends. Of course they're going to be spending eternity together. And hopefully that's going to be a marriage made in heaven when it gets bottled. So gas on. Put that on low. And I'm now just going to leave this for quite a long time. I want this to warm up slowly and gradually. And then once it has warmed up, I'm going to let it boil for a little while. Two things to point out. First of all, I'm not boiling this with a lid on because it releases the sulphide smells from within the malts, which means that I won't get a cabbagey taste in beer. Fingers crossed. Secondly, leave your wooden spoon across the top because if it does come to the boil, that prevents it all from boiling over and making a mess. I learned that from my mum. Well, it's a couple of hours later. And it's had a very leisurely time the malts as they've been uh, sat in the nice hot water you might notice that the water level has dropped a little bit that's uh, um, a consequence of having no lid on but that's as i explained earlier that's necessary and you can see the steam obviously coming off i've moved my wart now onto a larger ring and i want it to come to the boil i've, I've got the ring on low because i want it to just come to the boil gradually there's no need to rush any of this process it's a nice relaxed thing for me beer making. I don't want to be stressing about it, which is why I only do demijohns and I don't make larger amounts of it at once. So anyway, just to give you a little bit more information, this is a Rausch beer, which means it's a smoked beer. Uh, Rausch being German for smoke. If you've ever been in an airport in Germany, you'll have seen signs that say Rauschen ist verboten, uh, smoking is forbidden. Um, this is my version of a Rausch beer. I want to be very clear on that. Um, that's why I've only used 50% of Rausch malt, which is a smoked malt. I don't want it to be overly smoky. I want it to be something that I'm going to enjoy drinking. And don't get me wrong, I have enjoyed drinking uh, Rausch beers before on many occasions in Germany, particularly in Bamberg, uh, down in Bavaria, which is a wonderful city. It's like their version of York. If you ever get the chance to go to Bamberg and drink a Rausch beer, do it. But for my version of it, I'm not making it quite as smoky. And that's why I'm adding also the golden syrup to give it that sort of sweet toffee-ish flavour as well. I'm not going to put any hops in this recipe, it's not a hoppy beer, it's a malty beer. Uh, and so this is now for me um, going to be my first attempt at it, at a Rausch beer. And obviously everything I brew is a learning experience and I, you know, I could be doing it completely wrong. But I'm not really bothered if I am doing it completely wrong. Because for me it's a learning experience, I learn by my mistakes. I've got three golden rules. If it looks all right, it smells all right, and it tastes all right, 
it's all right and that's you know that's the end product and that's how I'm going to be judging it so I, I want this to come to the boil now and I'm looking forward to uh, then after that getting that transferred into the demi John getting this melted into it and getting the yeast added and activated okay the boil is happening now I'm going to leave this for one hour and then I'm turning it off and then that is the wart done Anyway, sticking with the German theme, I'm using German ale yeast and it's a liquid yeast. I've never used a liquid yeast before. It's one that's got to be kept cold, but I want to get it up to room temperature before putting it in to the wort. I, don't, I certainly don't want to put it in cold. So I'm going to take some of this out now and just get it up to room temperature. And just look at that spoon working its magic. There's a saying in German, which is Liebens Langens Lernen. In English we say lifelong learning and I'm learning as I'm going. So it turns out that the liquid yeast isn't as straightforward as what I thought. So for a start off I've got enough here for five gallons yet I'm only making one gallon. I've got my yeast and I've got my nutrient. Now I'm meant to mix this with this. I was meant to smack this in the packet for it all to erupt but I don't want to use the full lot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take about a quarter of this out and put it into a separate vessel I'm going to add a quarter of that and that activates the yeast which you're then supposed to leave for two or three hours. The rest of this and the rest of this I'm going to try and store separately and hopefully use again on a future brew. But I've got no idea if it'll work. Like I say, yeah, that's just one big experiment isn't it? Let's just see what happens. This is what's going in my beer. This is going back in the fridge and continuing the German theme. This is actually a German sausage glass, believe it or not. You can buy jars with German sausage in. So that's going back in my fridge to keep the yeast at a good temperature to preserve its life. Here's the nutrient. So I'm going to have to add about... God, I'm just going to go for a bit. I don't know. I just don't know what to add. I'm going to, I mean, I'm aiming for a quarter, but let's see what happens. There you go. I've probably got more than a quarter. The rest of it, <laughs> continuing the German theme, I'm going to store in this uh, old spice jar, which is actually a Schwarzer spice jar. So hey, it's German day in the house today. Deutsche Taglich, I think. Right, so that wants to go in the fridge. That wants to go in the fridge. And let's hope I can use these again on a future brew. In the meantime, here's my yeast with the nutrient mixed together. I'm going to put this just to one side in the kitchen. I'm going to cover it over so we don't get any contaminants in there. And I'm now going to leave this for a little while. So just while that's boiling away, I've got another saucepan now and I'm going to add some spring water into it. And I'm going to add the golden syrup into the water so that it dissolves within the water. So I'm just going to add a bit of white sugar in as well. I want this to be a nice syrupy liquid. It's about 100 grams gone in. I want this to have a good original gravity. Just don't tell the Germans I've put all this sugar in it because that would go against their purity laws. In for a penny, in for a pound. Let's have a bit more. Let's say there's 200 grams of sugar gone in there now. Okay, this has been simmering away nicely now for an hour. So I'm going to take the heat off it. Spoon off. And net on. And I'm just going to leave this now for half an hour just to settle. Right, I've got my damage on in the sink. Funnel, sieve, wart. And then my sugar solution over there. It's time to put this all together. So here goes. So at first it's just liquid and that goes down nicely. But then the grain starts to build up. So using the back of my spoon, I just push the grain through the sieve. I don't want to push too hard. As in, I don't want to push bits of grain through if possible, but I want to get as much liquid out of the grain as possible. And that's what's left. 
and that goes in here and I'm going to show you a recipe tomorrow or I'm going to make a recipe tomorrow about what you can do with that grain because it's a shame to just throw it away when you can do things with it and basically I keep repeating this process until I've got all the liquid out of there, all the grain onto here. So I might as well just come back when I've done it. Right, the pan's empty. There's all the spent grain. And look, my demijohn is three quarters full. I'm now going to top it up with the syrup and sugar solution. So I need to take the original gravity of my wart, so I'm just going to pour some into that flask. Now the gravity needs to be taken at about 20 degrees Celsius for a good accurate reading. It's way hotter than that now, in fact it's burning my fingers, so I'm just going to have to wait a while. While I'm waiting for the wart to cool, I'm just going to cover it over like that for now and come back to it in a little bit. I've still got my yeast down here. There's a bit of separation on top between the nutrient and the yeast, but hopefully it's coming alive now. But I can't add the yeast until I've taken the original gravity. Right, I'm going to introduce you to a couple of German words now. The first one is trub, and this is your trub, your sediment in the bottom. I think the translation is cloudiness or something like that. So, because I'm going to get a lot of sediment, I'm going to get less beer. Now it's only a demijohn and I want to try and get five 750ml bottles out of this if possible. So I've had to fill it high. Now that means that when I add the yeast it's all going to foam up the top and come out. Now what comes out of the top, this stuff on the top, the foam, is called a krausen. And a krausen means like flourishing or nourishment, it's like a, an expansion type word. So something where you've got flourishing, like these flowers are flourishing. So you're going to get that on top and it's going to come out. So if I put an airlock on there, I'm just going to get an airlock full of gunge. So instead of using an airlock, when I actually put this to start fermenting, I'm going to use something called a blow-off pipe. Uh, and I'm going to keep that on for a few days until the krausen has settled. So my hope is that I can get five bottles out of this demijohn. Um, if I get four then fine. I definitely will get four but I'd like to get five if possible. I need to measure the original gravity at round about 20 degrees for accuracy. I've just got my cast mark thermometer in and we're bang on 20 so let's get that gravity measured. So in goes the hydrometer. It's a nice buoyant brew. I'm guessing it's, oh, it's a very, very buoyant brew. Wow. It is 1092, looking at that. I don't know if you can see through there, if it will focus, but I'm starting off with an original gravity of 1092. I've changed rooms. I've been cooling down my wart. It was far too hot for the yeast, but now it's just about right. So I'm just going to give this a little shake around. A bit of agitation. In goes the yeast. And the amount of sugar in this from both the malt and from the syrup and the sugar that's got in there is really going to, it's going to have a good time. So before the Krausen forms, before the yeast really activates and rises in there, I need to get this pipe in. So now no contaminants are going to go in. And when the fermentation begins to happen, the CO2 will rise from the demijohn. It'll come up this pipe into here. That's why it's called a blowpipe and we're going to start to see some bubbles 
in here when the yeast activates. So it's been fermenting overnight and the Krausen is barely visible, it's tiny. I expected a, a very large Krausen on this, but no. So I'm not going to need the blow off pipe, which is going into here. So this is just some of the golden syrup and sugar solution that was left from yesterday. I've topped the demijohn up with that, as you can see. There's definitely fermentation activity happening, but it's not going as vigorously as I thought it would. Look at the airlocks popping, no need for the blow off pipe. So now it's just a case of leaving it and waiting. So this is about six hours later. Look at how fast that is now going. It's absolutely racing. I hope I didn't take the blow off pipe away too soon. Time will tell. I've never had a beer like that before. Fingers crossed it's going to be a good one. Good morning from the kitchen folks. Just a homebrew update with my Roush beer. As you can see, the colour is absolutely beautiful. A real lovely amber. It's probably lighter than what I expected. And if we look at the airlock, we can see nothing. So what this did was it took about two days to get going fermentation wise. And then it was furious. It's the fastest fermenter I've ever seen for about five days. Then it slowed right down. I've had it by the fire for three days. Uh, which maintained the fermentation, but now that's all stopped. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to clear it with some uh, finings before racking it off outside with the help of Mother Nature on this one degree centigrade day. I'm going to be clearing my beer today with Young's Clear It Wine Finings. This is a two-step process and I'll be beginning with bottle A. Let's get the airlock out. So I'm going to get my siphoning tube in, and as usual, the fun bit. So I can smell this, it smells very beery, which is good. And you can see where my tube is there, I just need to keep it above the level of the sediment as the liquid drops. So I've got a little bit further to go. I'm beginning to draw some sediment up, unfortunately, but I will get a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that so I don't draw the sediment up. I've ended up with a nice amount there. I should hopefully get at least four bottles, if I'm very lucky, five bottles out of this, and that's 750ml bottles. As I mentioned, the finings is a two-step process, and I'm going to begin by adding finings a... about a teaspoon. Then with finings uh, added, I'm just going to give this a little mix around. I want the finings really to kick in. I've now got to leave this for an hour, and after an hour I come back to it and add finings B. An hour has passed and you can see the sediment already from finings A. So I'm now going to siphon off back into the original demijohn, trying to avoid the sediment in the bottom of that demijohn. And there we go, the bubbles in the pipe indicate the siphoning is over. So I've lost a little bit more beer, but that is sedimenty, so it had to go anyway. So this is what I'm now left with. I'm hopeful of still achieving five bottles, but it's probably going to be four bottles in reality. 
So to continue the finings process, there's a little bit of finings B, and again I give this nice shake around. I want the finings to really mix with the beer. If it's not clear, it doesn't matter, but it's just nice to get some of the sediment out of it. The airlock's back in, and I'm now just going to leave this for a couple of days and we'll see what happens. So it's a cool two degrees in the garden, and I'm letting Mother Nature help with the clearing process. Hey folks, it's Roush beer bottling day in the kitchen. Here it is. It's been cleared as much as it will go. There's a bit of sediment in the bottom. It's been like this now for three days. It's not going to get any clearer anytime quickly. So I'm just going to get on with it now. I've got my bottles cleaned and sterilized and I've got my brew box ready. I'm bottling today into a combination of recycled champagne bottles and flip top bottles. Now in the recycled champagne bottles, I need to put three carbonation drops to create um, some gas and to get a secondary fermentation so I get some life in the beer. And in the smaller bottles, I just put one carbonation drop. So it's, it's one per 250 mil essentially. Next, it's bung out, siphoning tube in, and now the fun bit. So it's nice and clear, it's easy to see where the bottom of the pipe is. It smells very beery. And there we go, the bubbles in the pipe indicate that the siphoning is now over. There's a very little bit left in the bottom, just above the sediment. I don't want that. And uh, this has been successful. So using my trusted hydrometer and flask, let's see what the final gravity of this beer is. And the final gravity of this beer is 1031.03. Zero. I need to work out the final alcohol percentage of this from the gravity. So the original gravity was 1.092. I minus from that the final gravity, which was 1.030, and that equals 0 0.062. And then I multiply that by 131.25, and that equals Wow! A final alcohol percentage of 8.1375%, let's just say 8%, although it will be a bit more after the secondary fermentation. But can I just say to all Alan Partridge fans, back of the net. Okay, with my flip tops, this is very straightforward. Put the flip top in place, pull the front down, done. That was really easy. It's great that these were free. These would have gone in the bin or the recycle bin, but why not give them more life? Absolutely fantastic piece of engineering, so simple. Right, my champagne bottles require a little bit more attention. I've got the corks softening in hot water. The, the plastic corks, plastic bungs, I should say. Now, the reason that I have these in hot water is that they're quite stiff, and if you don't soften them, they're quite hard to get in sometimes. So let's just see what happens now. Lovely, that went in nicely.
That went in nicely. Oh, that one was a bit more challenging, and that's just the fact that the corks, are, uh, the plastic bungs, are cooling down. You know, as I've, I've took the water out of them. But there we go. So these are now in place, but I haven't finished because with corks you need cages. So the cages prevent unwanted missiles from the uh, carbonation building up pressure inside the bottles and shooting off the bungs, which does happen, trust me. Um, I've seen it, I've learned from my mistakes. So that's one. All of these are recycled, apart from the plastic bungs, the plastic bungs I've bought, but the cages are recycled from actual bottles that we've had. They're usually good for about three more uses with all the twisting and then they break. And I've, In fact, I've just had to uh, order some more. I've reached a point now where I'm running out. I'm brewing more than I've got the uh, equipment for. Right, so let's have a look at what we've got. I'm very, very pleased with how this has turned out flavour-wise. I hope the carbonation drops kick in and give it a bit of sparkle. I'll be reporting back in a month's time and in a month's time I'll be opening one of these bottles to see what it's like. So I'll see you then. Hey folks, it's Rausch beer opening day. Slightly nervous. It's been conditioning for seven weeks. I've chilled it down the, in the last couple of hours and I'm hoping that when I open this that I get, you know, a nice pop and a good smell, a good pour, good appearance and good flavour. The last time I opened a flip top on camera, the flip hit the ceiling. Enough said. So I'm slightly nervous, but let's just see what happens. If it's just got a little pop, I'll be more than happy. But who knows? So, here goes. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> it's one extreme or the other with me. Okay, that's not very encouraging. Let's have a look. I've got my 1993 Barnsley Beer Festival uh, tankard. Oh, actually, yeah, yeah. got life in it. Listen, it's not kept its head and that's a shame. There's life in it and you know what I can smell that roushness and I can smell the sweetness as well. It smells very good. Oh it's delicious. Absolutely beautiful. Really sweet and smoky. Yeah, that is a winner. I mean, I'm sorry that it's not got the head. I'm sorry that it doesn't have the appearance that I'd like to see on a good uh, ale. But do you know what? It's the taste that counts, isn't it, really? It looks all right. It smells wonderful. It tastes great. So, you know what? I'm happy enough with it. And it's the first time I've ever experimented with any kind of Roush recipe. So, fair enough. You learn by doing or you learn by brewing. Anyway, cheers, folks. I like it. See you next time. <sighs> the film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films. It really is very much appreciated. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the home and garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. Please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv 
again if you could subscribe to that channel it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden and you will find the page. If you like the page then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography as well as some stories then my username is Stu Moss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. -S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.